speak about finding hyper-exponential solutions of differential equations. Thank you, Laurent. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and thanks for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be here. I've been here three times, I think, or maybe four. I didn't remember when. Uh, and always when I've been giving a talk here, hi. Uh, I've been trying to be very polite. Uh, but today, politeness stops. <laughs> uh, today I've prepared a talk that consists of two critical offenses. The first is in the very beginning, and the second is in the very end. And it will be offensive to at least one person in the room, but assuming that the others are influenced by that one person that I have in mind, it may be offensive to also the others. Um, so I advise you, if you are uh, if you have a weak heart, or if you are under 18 in age, and maybe you don't want to attend this talk. So let me start with the first offense. I will be talking about solving differential equations in closed form. And this is offensive because here we are in holonomic land, and uh, what Doran keeps telling us is that if you want to solve a differential equation, like a linear one with polynomial coefficients, then the best way to represent the solution is the equation itself because it determines the solution uniquely if you have initial values. Um, and that's, uh, that's true and convincing for most of the cases, but for the purpose of this talk, I will claim that the, best, the most important thing you have to do when you have a differential equation is ask for closed forms. And after the talk, uh, we are back in holonomic land and we don't ask this anymore. So it's just for the purpose of this talk, I will, I will ask, how do we find, given an equation, how do we compute a closed form? So, in, in other words... Closed form is a stupid human obsession. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's offended already. <laughs> but wait for the second offense. It's much harder. Um, okay. Uh, so, what happens when in Maple you say desolve? That's the question. Um, it finds you, or well, it tries very hard to find, uh, to find uh, uh, a closed form solution. And the problem starts already there, because what is a closed form solution? A closed form is not as well-defined notion as like continuous or differential or, or some integral or so. So, uh, okay, wait, uh, wait a second. So here, this is, this is a kind of problem that, that may be an input. So there's one uh, independent variable x, always. There's no, no PDE, no x and y, just x, just x and numbers. And there's one unknown function which depends on this x. And the equation we have is always of this form. It has the f and its derivatives, not necessarily two, maybe more, and there are polynomials in front of these coefficients, uh, in front of these derivatives, and it's linear, and it's something like this. So what we want to know is, uh, what are the f's that satisfies this equation? And in this case, so the answer may be, uh, like, e to the x satisfies it, this is something you can check by inspection, so, uh, because then all of these things are equal, you just have to add up these polynomials and see whether it makes zero. So this plus this is zero, this plus this minus this is zero, and this plus this plus this is also zero, and so on. So this fits, and then this one you can do at home. I don't do it for you. And and these are the two the two equation. I mean the two solutions of this equation. There's no other. Every other solution is a linear combination of those two with constant coefficients. And you can use equation going backwards for the. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, but we are, we are going forward today, so that today we are, we are assuming we are given this and we want this as output. Okay, so I, asked, I said already, a closed form is not a well-defined notion. So when we want to be precise about what a closed form is, we have to make a choice uh, what kind of closed form we are talking about. So here are some possibilities. Uh, you can ask, uh, given an equation, what are the polynomials? A polynomial solution that satisfies, so uh, solutions that look like this. Um, there may be such solutions or not. Uh, if not, you can go to the next higher complicated class, more complicated class, would be rational functions. Asking uh, whether the differential equation has solutions that can be written as the quotient of two polynomials. I want to emphasize that when I say rational functions, I don't mean functions. I just mean formally, algebraically, quotients of two polynomials. Now, uh, again, such a solution may exist or not, and we want an algorithm that finds them all and tells us there are no others. And if there are no others, then the next more complicated thing you can look up is what we call hyper-exponential functions. Again, these are not functions, these are just algebraic objects, but you can think of them as expressions that can be written in this form. So, x of some rational function times 
something that is almost like a rational function, except that the exponents can be arbitrary numbers, they need not be integers. So this is called a uh, hyper-exponential function. It's something that satisfies first-order differential equation. No, the I expression that could also be viewed as functions. Yeah. Yeah. For example, as functions. No, no, it's not a function. It may be viewed as a function. If, maybe that's the second offense. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, algebraic functions is next. If you don't have a hyper-exponential function, you can ask, are there algebraic function solutions? If, if that's not the case, you can still ask, are there solutions that can be written in terms of elementary functions? Uh, so all, all of this can be given an algebraic meaning. Uh, if that's not the case, you can ask for special functions, uh, like, like uh, 2F1s, hypergeometrics, or Bessel functions, or so on. So given an equation, is there a solution that can be written something like this? Now, the, the algorithms are getting more and more complicated as you move from top to down. And since I have only 40, 48 minutes, um, I can't explain you all of this, so we will uh, drop this. I don't speak about this. Uh, I, I will explain you the, how to find polynomial solutions and rational solutions. That's, that's not something that I have done. This is very classical and known since the end of the 19th century. But uh, if, if you haven't seen it before, you should see it now. And if you have seen it before, you can check whether you have a better way of explaining it, and afterwards tell me if so. And then, uh, when I'm done with this and this, then I show you something new about finding hyperexponential functions, which we did this year for a computer algebra conference. So let's start with polynomials. Again, the problem is this. Given the differential equation, the question is, is there a polynomial which I can plug in for f so that this equation is satisfied? In this example, that would be uh, two polynomials, that one, x minus 3, and x cubed plus 5. And because it's a third uh, order equation, there is a third solution, but, but that happens to be not a polynomial. So we want, to be, we want the algorithm to find all the polynomials, and it cannot just search forever. It has to recognize at some point that it has found all of them, and the other thing is not a polynomial. We want to be sure about that. So the, the question is very easy. Um, if somebody tells us the degree, so if we are not asking for arbitrary polynomial solutions, but for polynomial solutions of degree 3, let's say. Uh, let's say uh, we have such a polynomial, so we, we know very well how cubic polynomials look like. They all look like this. The, the only variance there is what the coefficients may be. So no matter what the coefficients are, they are independent of x. So I know not only what the x f looks like, but I, can, I also know what its derivatives look like. I can formally differentiate this without knowing what the c's are. So uh, this is f prime, this is f double prime, this is f prime prime prime, uh, regardless of the specific choice of the c's. And now what I have to do is I have to find uh, instantiation for the c's uh, that matches the given differential equation. So I take all these things here, this equation, that one, that one, that one, and plug this into the appropriate parts of the differential equation. Here. Check. Uh, and then this has to be true. Now, what kind of an expression is this? This is an expression in which has x and the c's. So I have them colored here. The, the x is just the x, and the c's, uh, remember, they are the coefficients of the solution we are looking for, so they will not depend on x. So if I write this as a polynomial in x, so by sorting this, reordering this expression, write it like this, then a, a polynomial in x is zero if and only if all its coefficients are zero. So this gives me constraints about the c's. This has to be zero, this has to be zero, this has to be zero, and this has to be zero. So that's a system of linear equations. We can solve it, and it, in this case it has two solutions. One is, corresponds to this vector, one corresponds to this vector, and uh, you recognize these are the coefficients vectors of the, of the polynomials that I showed in the beginning. So the, the, the general solution of this example differential equation is this polynomial, some constant times this, plus some other constant times this. And these are all the polynomial solutions of degree at most 3. Um, it could still be that there is a, a third polynomial solution of degree 12. Um, this is what we have to exclude now. So uh, who will tell us uh, how big the degrees can become? Uh, really? Here. So basically for any alpha and beta this will work? Yeah. No matter what numbers you play, it will always work? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. 
So the, the solution, uh, the solutions of a differential equation, linear, always form a vector space.